Welcome to Math with Mr. J. In this video, we're going to talk about how to solve negative exponents. And we have six negative exponent problems on your screen that we're going to go through together in order to get this down. Now, up top, I have a few things to keep in mind as we go through these, the rules we're going to use. Change to the reciprocal, your base does not change, and your exponent becomes positive. And this will have the opposite effect of positive exponents. Now, that might not make any sense right now, but as we go through these problems, you'll definitely see what I mean by that. So let's jump right in to number one. We have 10 to the power of negative 2. So we know that 10 to the power of positive 2 equals 100. 10 to the power of negative 2 does not give us negative 100. A negative exponent does not mean a negative answer. But it will give us a different answer than what 10 to the power of a positive 2 gives us. So what we need to do is we need to change 10 to the power of negative 2 to its reciprocal, which means we are going to flip 10 to the power of negative 2 to the denominator. We're going to flip this fraction. And we can create any, we can make any whole number, negative number, what have you, into a fraction by placing it over a 1. Now we have a fraction equal to that original exponential form of 10 to the power of negative 2. So again, we're going to take the reciprocal. So we're going to flip this. Our negative 2 tells us that we need to do this. So we now have a numerator of 1. Our base of 10 stays the same. And our exponent of negative 2 is now positive once it's changed to this reciprocal. So now we're able to solve and find our answer. So we know that 10 to the second power equals 10 times 10. So our answer is going to be, well, 10 times 10 equals 100. Our answer is 1 hundredth. So you can see how these two are related when we have a positive or a negative um, exponent there. So again, positive exponent will increase the value of our base of 10, right? We went from 10 and we got it to equal 100. A negative ex exponent is going to decrease our value, right? We went from 10 and now we ended up with 100, but we do not get a negative number. So let's take a look at number 2. 3 to the power of negative 2. So we need the reciprocal. So we can put 3 to the power of negative 2 over 1 to create a fraction. And it does not change the value of that 3 to the power of negative 2. But when we solve it, we need to change it to the reciprocal, which means flipping that fraction. So the 1 is now on top. Our base of 3 stays the same, and this negative 2 changes to a positive 2 because it's now the denominator. So now we can solve. And 3 to the power of 2 equals 9, right? 3 times 3. So our answer is 1 ninth. Now let's take a look to see how that relates to 3 to the power of a positive 2 and that equals 9. So the positive 2 gives us 9, and the negative 2 gives us 1 ninth. Let's take a look at number 3. So let's uh, change to the reciprocal, which would be 1 over 4, or I'm sorry, yes, 1 over 4 to the power of a positive 3. So that would be 4 times 4 times 4. Well, 4 times 4 is 16, times 4 is 64. So we would get 1 64th here. 4 to the power of a positive 3 would be 64. Number 4. 2 
to the power of negative 5. So reciprocal, same base, positive exponent. 2 to the fifth power. 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16, times 2 is 32. So we get 1 over 32 here. Number 5, 5 to the power of negative 3. Reciprocal, same base, positive exponent. Well, 5 times 5 times 5. So 5 times 5 is 25, times 5 is 125. So 1 over 125. Lastly, 12 to the power of negative 2. Again, the steps, reciprocal, same base of 12, positive exponent. And 12 to the second power of 12 squared means 12 times 12, which is 144. So we get 1 over 144. So there you have it. There's how you solve negative exponents. We change to the reciprocal. The base does not change and we get a positive exponent once it's our denominator. Thanks so much for watching. Hopefully that helped. Until next time, peace.